Hello, John here again and welcome to Tutorial 35, the Community Development Game Pro Series and this is episode 23 and in this episode I decided to bring you up to speed of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, so we're not I'm not gonna run two sets of code. Found it difficult last time and I'm really annoyed that the screen capture program didn't capture the Raspberry Pi screens. Luckily I'm still recording my screen. But it was very annoying when I got to it and it hadn't it, it had just decided oh, I'm not working today. You can start off mate. So what I've decided to do is I've put all the code now right smack bang up to date onto the Raspberry Pi. So there's a lot of stuff in here and I'm going to try and get through it all um, hopefully. What's that doing in there? All these pre-compiled files. Go away. That's because I've moved it from the Raspberry Pi desktop. Let's just make sure I'm deleting the right ones. Get rid of that one. Right. Cool. That's where they should have been. But we'll get rid of that as well. So delete. Now, there's been a lot gone on between that the last one I did and the one now. Now um, I've implemented collision detection. I've implemented. I've started doing the player lives, and um, got the hit boxes sorted out. Uh, well, not sorted out, but showing so you can see them. And um, <clears throat> I've got some leveling going on. So when you get to the end, it'll move on to the next level. So I've got that, and I've just started doing the death scenes. But the biggest thing, and is is this and I'll show you I'll show you up front so let's load main in yeah, let's go into that one let's create a custom JSON file because I'm fed up of um, fed up of having to be on main so basically we just turn main dot py So now I don't need to have that open, I can just press that and it should load the right one. There we go. Wonderful. So let me get the Raspberry Pi keyboard out. And as you can see, we've got scrolling. She jumps. There you go, she jumps got scrolling look all the way over and what's happening is is we have got a staging area and scenery so there so that's the end oh and there's the death scene <laughs> instant death now it's come back because we've got to try again now normally she falls over and dies it, oh a bug in there because it's instantly doing it when it shouldn't be so we need I'll need to sort that out and I've got the lives indicator at the top but they're following the character so I may have to do something about that as well because I don't like the way that's happening but if I press H it's going to show you the hitboxes so the blue is me and the red ones are enemies Oh, she'd animated properly then. I can't see the raspberry screen that well. There we 
we go. Oh, too late. So what I'm trying to do is I'm the round circle is the hitbox. The square is the sprite dimensions. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that the we're not doing square on square because when you do square on square collisions it looks like you haven't hit it but you've died and if you look at the coin I've got a circle around the spinning coin so if we just cross over like that see even though the squares crossed over it didn't say we did it because the two circles hadn't crossed over all right so let's do that then so let me um jump there we go so the two two circles fit now we're on to this next level here we are we're on the next level so what's on this one i think it's rocks coming in both directions i think so there's oh fireball 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 run oh no and the reason that's happened is because the fireball is still a square and we're a circle So let's leg it over here and see if we can jump over the fireball. Jump? No. No, I think I've made this too hard. Leg it, leg it, leg it, leg it, leg it. Leg it, leg it, leg it. No, too early. Oh, so close. So as you can see, I've got in infinite lives yet because I haven't implemented the delete, taking the life. Go on, jump. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. I'm sure you can do it. Let's jump a bit closer. Jump a bit closer. Now, there we go. Jump. There we go. So this should be with the, there it is, with the grooves in it. I think I've, on this one we've got everything being thrown at us. I think, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's impossible. Right. Let's get rid of that. Put the keyboard away. Now, what we're doing, as you can see, is we have got... The axe has been modified, as you can see. So if we go into source control, we should be able to see the before and after. See what's been different in there. Well, it says it's modified, but according to this, they're the same. They are the same. That's strange. Coins should be the same. Ah, it's different. This one's diff definitely different. So on the coin of changing the hitbox from being a square into a circle, and this is what I'm trying to do, and setting the radius of the hitbox. This is enemies. Now this, I didn't check in before. That's why it's new. Fireball should have changed, I think. No, it's just a line game has definitely changed lots of stuff because we've got all the seat the, the stage and the scenery now now what i mean by stage and scenery is i think i explained it in a previous video let me see if i can find that those slides There we go. So basically I've extended the game stage to be bigger than the screen. And what we do is as the character moves along, the screen locks onto the character roughly in the center and moves the display area to follow the character across the, st the staging area. And basically how, that's ha how that works is this is zero zero of the display and if the display is the same as the staging place so there then the staging area is at zero zero like the display but 
as the display moves and follows the character, the display, the destaging area, no longer the top corner is no longer zero zero. It could be minus one hundred zero, minus two hundred zero, minus three hundred zero, and that's exactly what happens. I implemented that in this code. So if we go into the game, so let's load game. You'll see what I mean. So I've created the screen, which is the width of the screen. So that's our display area. And I've created another surface called stage, which is the width and height of our staging area. And if you want to know what that is, then it's 2100 by 600. So that even the staging area height is bigger than the screen. Then, um, well, that's where title's coming from. Here. Uh, return of Quasi Osborne. Great name, great name. Anyway, so here, when we come to draw, it's the only that. Once we've got the two surfaces, it's only in the draw what we need to change. So in the draw down here, here we go. Draw. We work out what the scroll is for the X and that's the difference between the display current point and where the staging current point is that's the scroll and so what we do is we say that the player has a position so the player will have the actual position which is from 0 to 2100 and then we work out what the scroll is from that and the best thing to do is to pretend right so the player is at 1000 the screen is 600 wide yeah and we're always centered on the player. So that means the player relative to the screen is at point 300 on the x-axis. So therefore, if the player is at 1000, then you minus the 300 to give you the top corner of the screen. Yeah, so that's 700. So therefore, the staging area must be at minus 700 to give us the right stage for where the character is yeah and that's what we do basically we do it for the x minus the player position x blah 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 and mine and on the y-axis so it allows us to um, also when the player jumps that the the the, the, the the screen jumps with her and so you get that bobble effect and then what we do is we blitz the stage onto the screen yeah so we don't blitz the screen onto the screen we blitz the stage onto the screen because the screen is always going to be static and that's how we get this um, follow effect so watch when she falls to the floor when it starts up the camera follows look yeah now the camera is centered on her so when she walks Oh, I've got the same using the not, not using the Raspberry Pi keyboard. Oh, too late. Let's uh, come back. Here we go. So the cam, so she manages to move, but when she does a U-turn, look, the camera then has to f doesn't doesn't quite keep up with her, and it <coughs> just allows that proper camera motion for the character so that's what that's another thing that's changed so now I've been trying to do the hitboxes so the hitboxes are normally square but I've been trying to slowly convert them into circles so I've had to change the player one <clears throat> so the player hitbox used to be defined by this get rectangle yeah 
but as soon as you specify radius then it becomes a hit circle yeah and so when we and what I do is when we animate so there's a function for animation now you know, I'll get next animation so when we get the next animation frame we get the image then I get the square hitbox and then I apply the array the radius to it then which then becomes a radius a circle hitbox and it then after that all what it does if as long as the other one is using a excuse me oh, just had a yawn then <laughs> sorry um, so if the the if the other sprites are circle hitboxes, then it will test that. But if I'm testing a circle hitbox against the square hitbox, it'll always drop down to the square hitbox. It'll ignore the circle hitbox. So that's why I'm, I'm slowly converting all the enemies into circle hitboxes because the fireball one isn't done. No, it's not. But I think I've done the rock one. Yep, yeah, set the radius there. So I'm slowly converting it. Now, as you noticed, you saw that I got the hitboxes turned on, and that was really, really dead easy. Because what I've got is I've got a, a global variable that says um, show hitboxes. So it's either on or off, and, it, that, and that's just a, an exclusive not. Here we go. That it tests. So if key down and it's H, then not what it was so if it was false it becomes true and if it was true it becomes false and then what I do is I draw the hitbox around all the enemies so at the moment they're all still square yeah and it's in red but as you can see I'm now drawing the hitboxes the circle hitboxes as well around the blue which is friendly uh, enemies I've also, um, you know, I've put everything into now um, function. So did we reach the goal is now its own function. We saw this in the last um, episode. <clears throat> I've now started impl implementing the state machines. So we have different statuses in the, in the settings. So currently we have got running, dying, dead out of lives goal got and basically that allows us to then have the game flow following the right um, aspects which is here look so as you can see i've implemented the running i've implemented the dying the dead out of lives is not dead, done and all that stuff and basically it's just allowing us to do the game flow so the game flow is going to be in the game update section so I've just started doing that I've created a new class called player life and basically that's the sprite in the top corner that follows her yeah the so let me run it again these four here so it that class looks after these sprites and so when she moves they move they follow and I'm not sh don't like them that close I what really want them to be fixed on the screen here so I've got to work out all the scrolling aspect and and try and, and do that as well so that these then are so this is the animation, the loading frames, and this is the update. So these get plonked into the same sprite pool as everything else. And so when the update fires, this fires. So as you can see, I'm centering on the player, but at the top of the screen. The next things, levels. No, that's the same. Yeah, so that's basically it. So what I've done in the game We've got this in the update and in the actual run as well, we've added some things in there as well. So we've got, you know, the animation frame. So we work out the animation frame and stuff like that. 
and then in the main we've changed it so now we start off at level one we're going to show a level start screen and then we're going new the game and then it's running and so we do chapter two and what I need to do in here, I think, is this level start screen really shouldn't be there. It should be there. So when you do a next, when you do the next level, it shows the screen saying we're starting the next level, level two, level three, level four, and then it does. This is the actual <coughs> running of the game. That's what fires the runoff, and then when it's when the is playing flag has been set false it jumps out and then we test are we dead and in there we're going to have all the code that says how many lives we've got if we've still got lives send us back round if we're not dead that means we must have done the leveling so it does the next level so it actually moves into the next level so there's a lot of changes in here so what I'm going to try and do is I've got to finish off the <coughs> excuse me the um, the radius and the circling of all the other uh, mobs and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do fireball because that was pretty hard to get over. And what we're going to do is here we go. So we're going to create we're going to set create it off. radius equals zero and then we're going to copy rock so we're going to copy that put it in fireball and basically it's in the frame getter here but this time it's not going to be width it's going to be height because it's a lot longer than it is and as you notice we have a routine and this is in the wrong place this is reactivating it so we need to copy that Put it here as well. That's it. Fireball. So that's in the right place. So we'll copy that. And we'll paste it in the reactivation. Yeah. So that's done that. Now the axe is going to be a bit diff bit different because it's uh, because it rotates and if we do a circle that means an awful lot of hitbox that's not actually a hitbox. Ah, let's grab this drink. So what we're going to do we're going to still have the square hitbox for that because the the hitbox um the hitbox uh adjusts when um, it's rotating uh, let me see if I can show you what I mean where's the level where's the JSON file here we go so if I grab these and we'll temporarily put it on level one and we'll put it high up in the screen so she doesn't she doesn't get hit and we'll get rid of the other one as well so we just have the one right let's run that and just so I can show you what I mean so I'm gonna have to run backwards and forwards so I'm gonna turn hitboxes on so you can see there we go can you see the hitbox adjusting for the axe that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave it like that. Because if we do a square, but then again, we could still do a square, but we uh, a circle. No, let's do a circle. We could make 
make the circle hitbox smaller. Yeah, let's do that. So, what we're going to do is axe. We're going to fix the radius. So, how big is it? Do we translate it? No, we don't scale it. Right, so how big are these axes? Let me just have a quick look. So they are, wow, 2,105 high by 928. So we don't scale it. We do not scale it. I'm sure we scale it. Yeah, size, size. So that's loading the animation in. We don't? Oh, I'm surprised at that. That's a big hitbox. Oh, hang on. Looking at the wrong. Right, 80 tall by 35 wide. So we'll make a radius of 35. So we'll make a radius of 35. So here we'll do self dot radius equals 35. And we'll also do it up here as well in the update. And in the game, we'll implement the circles. So let's grab that circle. And we'll paste it in there. But we are making it red. And it's sprite.rec. And sprite dot radius. Right, so the axe should have a radius, it does. Rocks have a radius. Fireball has a radius. So that's them all. Right then. Let's see if we can see all these radiuses. And hopefully don't die while we're testing them out. Right, got the Raspberry Pi keyboard out. Come on, Rock, where are you? H. Ooh, boom. Oh, the Ninja doesn't have a radius. Right, so where's Ninja? So we'll give him a radius. And when he gets updated, that's there. We'll give him a radius. And we might as well make it the same as the rock. So width, so it's the width of him. And do we need it anywhere else? No. So that should be it. Right, let's see. Hopefully I've got all the sprites now. All having radiuses. So we'll turn, as soon as it appears, we'll turn on hitbox. Hitbox, there we go.
see what I mean by the axe having the circle. Oh, look at that. Yeah, just caught it. Right, so they're still hitting on the squares. So I've got to change the hit mechanics for the and the way to do it is not in there, it's in player. Right, so win the update. Here we go. So to change the hit mechanics. Oh, where's we have to put a, a a a setting in the hit? That's the walls. So where's the enemy hit? Update. Perform run self dot enemy hit. Here we go. Find okay, so it must be near somewhere. So it is here, right? So we need to do let's go on the thing and we need to find out how to make it do the collide on the circle. I think you have to put a parameter in the um, so sprite collide sprite collide, here we go no no Right, collide, come on. Not mask. It's not group collide, is it? Sprite collide. What? Sprite collide. Here we go. Collided equals none. Collide circle, that's what we need to do. That is what we need to do, I think. I think that's what we need to put at the end. comma by game dot sprite dot I think that's what we need to do Right, let's see if this is right. Yes, that's better. Right, we'll do that again, but this time with the hitboxes on. Yep. Yeah. That's better. 
because we had the two circles colliding then it wasn't just based on the square good 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 so that means all the enemies are now on the circle colliding. Um, this is the gravity check. We still want them on the squares. Um, calculate new position. Yeah, and in game, I think that's where we check if we've hit the goal I think yeah did we reach the goal and I think that's the circle as well did we reach goal PG yeah co co collide circle excellent right so now you've caught up and we've done some more as well so you've caught up um, as you can see the game is well and truly on still learning the mechanics and um, hopefully you guys are following along and hopefully you guys are implementing your own even if you take the code out of github it's a good resource to um, try it and to see if you can learn the mechanics yourself but this is and if anyone's come with a better set of mechanics I'm all up for that I'm all up for that so now we've caught up, this is the current state as it is today and every video of that now after is going to be of the current state and even maybe some Twitch test sessions as well. Right, 37 minutes, 38 minutes now. I will say if you like the video, click that like button, if you didn't like the video, fine hit the dislike button, always leave me a comment and and I try to answer all of them and if you like what I do and would like to support the channel then consider becoming a patron of mine all the money raised in patron is used for the channel and with that I will say see you in the next episode take care bye I'd like to thank all the Patreons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.